Speaking of which, okay, so you work on that show with uh, Paul Thompson. What was it called? If you're so good, why are you in Saskatoon? Right. Okay, so you do that, and then after that, um, or so you okay, you eventually make it to Toronto. Yes. How does that transition happen? Happens yeah. because I forget there were a couple of trips, but. One was a tour that we did of a sequel to Paper Wheat. I also did Paper Wheat out there. Okay. And was in the original company of Paper Wheat. Okay. Which was a great experience. What was that like? Oh, that was, you know, it sounds so weird. I am talking about so long ago, which is always strange, know. you know? It's, yeah. Know. But there were still people who lived in a sod hut there, you know, a sod house in um, there. So we talked to pioneers. And really what the play was about, as much as it was the uh, cooperative movements of, of the, the grain elevators and the, uh, the wheat board and all these things, it was mm -hmm. really about the pioneer experience and how it basically has to be a collective mm -hmm. experience of sharing as opposed to one person beating everyone down and becoming the king. Right. You know? So I talked to people, some beautiful old people, and we put their experiences in the play. Mm -hmm. And the first time we did it, that play was four hours long. Hmm. And there was experience that we opened it at Sintaluta, which was the, the, the where, where originally they had formed the grain pools that, that were part of the collective or socialist or whatever you want to call it, basis of the Saskatchewan farmers. Mm -hmm. And we had this packed house at a, a meeting house that had been up in at the turn of the century, and it's rare in Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. and. Lane Coleman wasn't in the play, but he watched it. And he said it was both just terrible and really great at the same time. <laughs> it was just endless, right? Right, yeah. But, and we had probably never done a run of the whole show. And at the end, we'd finally finished, like not knowing what it was we'd done, but we'd gotten some laughs, and the whole audience like stood up and just cheered. And mm -hmm. it was like, oh, yeah. oh, we did something, you know? Mm -hmm. And afterwards, of course, it was cut, and then it was re, re, reshaped mm -hmm. um, by someone else whose name I can't remember. That's right. Guy Sprung. Okay. Right. But Guy Sprung. Yes, and he did the the, the, the the tour where they really pulled it together and got a fiddler and and did all that. What was what was your take on Guy Sprung at that time? He was a very strong personality. Mm -hmm. For some reason. I didn't connect with him particularly, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know what I don't know what that was. It was mm -hmm. just I, d I never uh, worked with him, but he was around and he was a strong personality, and he really knew how to take that four hours and make it into an incredibly successful touring show mm -hmm. that was so successful it pr practically killed the theater. Oh, really? Because and a hit can do that. Then mm. what they want is paper wheat too. Right. Right? You become right. defined by this one show. Right. And then the other stuff you want to do, which is urban, and Saskatoon is an urban place and mm -hmm. modern and everything else, all of a sudden it's like, ugh. Why can't you just do Where are those work? big hearted pioneers? You right. Know? Right. Interesting. Okay, so after that. After that, we did another tour and it kind of sunk us. We did it 97 one night stands over Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. Wow. And that kind of did us in. And we, the show wasn't very good, and it was just, it was hard. And so, you know, and then it was summer, and we had some money, some money, and, and we just came west hoping Thompson would hire us. <laughs> Paul or Thompson somebody would hire us, yeah. Because Thompson looking. was, was, and this was, I think the build, this building was just being bought. Mm -hmm. They're not quite sure. And we just, you know, we were sort of trained in the process, and mm -hmm. lots of his original company were going on to other things, and so, and he did hire us. Right. And um, he hired Lane and shows. I'm not sure that we worked together. We did show at Tarragon, and and then I did a couple of shows with him. And by this point, I was into it. Like I, mm -hmm. I would, I, I could do it. You're all in. Whatever it was, and I could s sort of find some kind of narrative thread. I mean, collectives are killed often by trying to make too much of a narrative thread. Let's make it like a real play. Yeah, but what's great about collectives is the odd things which happen that can't always be put under one nice dramaturgical bow. You right. know? Mm -hmm. So it's the crazy stuff, and that's how you get there. Mm 
mm-hmm. but still you're trying to find themes that connect and I could do that mm-hmm. and we did this play one of the ones Thompson hired me to do and then uh, basically I was sort of based here we, I didn't go back to Saskatoon um, after that mm-hmm. um, and this play was one of Thompson's things where the idea was we would do a play in deliberately bad French about a bunch of English people who've come to Quebec to save Canada, <laughs> right? Knowing that all his friends were separatists or independentists yeah. or whatever you want to call them, because they were, you know, the, the vital people in Quebec. Yeah. We're not going, you know, let's stay in Canada. You know, they were going, let's get out or let's make our own universe, you mm-hmm. know, with its own rules. Mm-hmm. So we played at Théâtre d'Aujourd'hui, known as a left-wing separatist theater, Mm-hmm. And we just cleaned up. Right. And one of his conceits was we had classic characters that would go there, w- that would, were coming to save Canada. And he wanted us to play with heads, or uh, political heads of the country. And I started playing around with this Trudeau character. Just because it was fun. Just because I don't know why. I, mm-hmm. I enjoyed doing it. And it was getting so in the rehearsals that he was going to have to get the hook. Because Trudeau <laughs> was, was sneaking into all of these things. Okay, no, we don't mm-hmm. need him. We need somebody else. Mm-hmm. And so I did this little Trudeau character in the show. And we, we sold out. They loved us because mm-hmm. we were called Les Maudits Anglais. Mm, that's right. right. The goddamn English. The title itself. It yeah. set us up. And mm-hmm. they loved us. Mm-hmm. And we had a, some kind of ticker tape at the bottom translation because our... French was so bad, and <laughs> I pretended I was from Saskatchewan, you know, right. so, of and, course. anyway, right. but, and Thompson said, in those rehearsals, he said, that's your one-person show, you do both of them, mm. meaning Pierre Trudeau and Margaret Trudeau, and I went, I don't want to do a one-person show, everybody's doing a one-person show, oh. but then there was no work afterwards, and he didn't have anything cooking up, mm-hmm. and so I, I said, okay, maybe I am interested in doing this. Mm -hmm. And he sent a lot of one-person shows on their way. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, did what what Thompson thinks. He says, okay, but if it works, you do it for two years. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, likely I'll do it for two years. (laughs) Right, because he wanted to commit me, wanted to be able to make the impact that a show can have if the actor sticks with it. He was, like... He was making a deal. Okay. The deal yeah. was, if it worked, I had to do it for two years. You can't go off and do a movie. You can't go off and do... Commit mm-hmm. to the doing of it, okay. as well as the creating of it. Hmm. 